<laughs> Holy f Total and utter domination, there's no other way to describe it. Since Audi decided to make an assault on Le Mans, nobody else has really had much of a look in. Back in 99, Audi arrived in France with two R8Rs and two closed cars, the R8Cs. They weren't especially fast in comparison to the BMW and Toyota competition, but the R8Rs showed good durability and finished third and fourth. In 2000, they were back with a new open car simply called the R8. They finished first, second and third. The next year, R8s finished first and second again, and in 02, they took a clean sweep of the podium. And so it continued, the record stands at 13 wins in 17 years, along the way Audi recording the first victories for a diesel powered car and the first hybrid victory too. Which leads us to Audi's 2016 Challenger and the car I'm going to be driving today, the R18. It barely looks like a car, more some kind of super insect that's evolved to thrive in a weird hidden ecosystem. But that's what happens when sports car racing goes through a golden period as it is right now. Manufacturers are racing to create cars with huge aerodynamic grip and super efficient hybrid drivetrains. The 4 litre single turbo V6 diesel engine of this R18 for example uses 32% less fuel than it did just 5 years ago. Beneath the unbelievably complex shape is a carbon fibre chassis with an aluminium honeycomb core. It utilises double wishbone push rod suspension at the front and a pull rod system at the rear. The suspension is interlinked to ensure a stable aero platform. That diesel engine produces over 514 horsepower and over 625 pounds foot according to Audi and drives the rear wheels. The front axle is powered by a motor generator unit rated at over 470 horsepower for a total of a thousand or thereabouts in a car weighing 875 kilos. This is the first Audi prototype to use lithium ion batteries for energy storage instead of a flywheel system, which required a total rethink of the entire car. That meant lots of niggles and yielded just third and fourth at Le Mans. But at the last WEC round in Bahrain, the R18 was sorted and it blitzed the competition, claiming pole and a 1-2 in the race. So it might be the fastest prototype racing car in the world right now. It's 11.34, I reckon I'll be in the car in about 5 or 10 minutes, last guy before me, 4 laps. Um, been watching this thing all day, not all day, this morning, go round with the proper drivers, a couple of journos, uh, and you expect to be excited about this stuff, but there's just fear, proper fear. Holy f I'm driving the R18 on the handling circuit at Audi Sports Neuburg Motorsport Competence Centre, which is around 20 kilometres west of their Ingolstadt HQ. The 2.2 kilometre track isn't exactly made for testing the high-speed aero of a Le Mans prototype, I'm not complaining. This is proper once-in-a-lifetime stuff. In preparation, I've done a whole two laps in an RS3, but here's what it looks like in an Audi R18.
How to describe driving the R18? Okay, so the first sensation was relief that I hadn't stuttered into the anti-stall, quickly followed by shock at the way the thing took off from the pits. I felt like I was babying it, but the forces were 911 Turbo S in launch control, plus a whole lot more. The driving position is completely alien, but feels very natural very quickly, and despite not being a killer left foot breaker, I didn't struggle to adjust to the R18. In fact, the whole car felt, and I hesitate to say this, but easy to drive. Not darty and remote, not like it wants to spit you off. The traction is unreal, and the way it literally jumps out of corners is at first terrifying, but soon you just want to feel it again and again. Of course, everything happens so fast and I'm barely scratching the surface. Was I in the wrong gear and hit anti-stall or was I a gear too low and the traction control is cutting the power? I just don't know. I'm sure I locked the brakes a couple of times, but the car seems to barely notice and turns in perfectly every time. It's just intense. Even on a freezing day on treaded tyres, it beats a GT3 car on slicks for braking and cornering and accelerates in the lower gears like a P1 GTR running nitrous. It's simply the purest, most exciting driving experience I've ever had. More than anything, I leave with respect for the guys who drive the wheels off these things for a double or triple stint. The concentration and discipline required is unimaginable. To experience the R18 even just for a few laps is something else. To know that this car is the last in a long line of incredible machines that have dominated the sport and helped nurture the WEC into what it is today is something close to tragic. Audi pulled the plug on its endurance racing program out of the blue and just a few weeks before my drive of the R18. The 2017 car was designed and its parts are still laying in their boxes, never to be built up into a hole. So it's a quiet farewell to Audi after a glorious era. We really, really hope they come back soon.